Was there any day more fitting to release this film than April 1st? After numerous delays, Morbius has finally been released to a public's welcome as hostile as Dracula at Olive Garden. You see, Morbius is about Jared Leto trying to salvage his acting career after his stint as the Joker by portraying the doomed Michael Morbius. Suffering from an unknown blood disease that prevents his body from producing its own blood, Morbius decides to splice Costa Rican vampire bat DNA with human DNA. As you do. Morbius accomplishes this thanks to the funding granted to him by his childhood friend Lucian, nicknamed Milo because I'm sure Victor would have a fit. And after the test proves successful, Morbius becomes a living vampire and drinks everyone except the plot-armored love interest like a Capri Sun. And after swimming 30-some-odd miles back to the mainland, Morbius now seeks a cure for his new, albeit deteriorating, condition. But soon he learns he is not the only vampire hickeying people to death in the Big Apple. With a premise like that, you would think this film would offer more than it does. All the film needed to do was be a modern Dracula with a bit of Jekyll and Hyde thrown in. This bugs me the most, since this film needed to be based in horror, but ended up being a flat color-by-numbers committee movie. Like a higher-up at Sony told an employee to bring him a list of the most popular vampire media to rip off and throw in a mix of the MCU's low standards. What doesn't this film rip off? Abundance of CGI to disguise lackluster action sequences? Check. A story that doesn't seem like it was written with a climactic battle, but has one because that is the standard of comic book films? Check. Angry vampire faces to switch back and forth between? Check. Vampires that run faster than Damon Salvatore? Check. The vampiric protagonist has to supercharge their powers with real human blood? Check. A mirror match with an evil version of the main character? Check. See, that one is the ironic criticism. I've seen a lot of people online complaining that Sony doesn't know how to make unique villains. Like, what the cinnamon toast fuck are you talking about? WandaVision just happened, not to mention evil Iron Man, Hulk, Black Panther, Ant-Man, and Doctor Strange, which literally is happening now with Strange's sequel. <laughs> I mean, despite being around for the last 14 years, the MCU really doesn't have much left to go on and has even less care to write a story that doesn't rely on convenience without explanation. For example, it's awfully convenient as a child, Morbius has a galaxy brain and is able to fix Milo's life support with no prior knowledge. It's awfully convenient that one of the serums goes missing, allowing Milo to become a vampire even though Milo has no idea how to use it. It's also convenient that the same berserking bloodlust that affected Milo when he turned and caused him to drain that innocent nurse didn't make Morbius turn Martine into a Slurpee. Good lord, it's even awfully convenient that there happens to be an army of Costa Rican vampire bats in the sewers of New York City for Morbius to summon in the final fight against Milo. <laughs> Morbius is loaded with this crap from start to finish, and every time one of these numerous and lazy moments occurs, it just made me want to slap the writers with a fly swatter like I was Dan Aykroyd. Now, on the flip side, I don't believe this is actually deserving of the crown for the worst MCU film. I know I can feel you clutching your garlic cloves from here. I'm not saying that it doesn't fall down the tier ladder hard either. Make no mistake, Morbius falls squarely into D-tier pile-up alongside, like, Thor 2 and Shang-Chi, but it's not quite F-tier. So, why? Well, frankly, it didn't rape the character like Black Widow, nor is it politically driven like Black Panther or Captain Marvel. Just like Morbius himself, this film exists in an odd sort of limbo. It doesn't push boundaries, ask questions, or put in an effort to make me care about these characters any more than flush toilet paper. Like, sure, it's a terrible film, yeah, but at the end of the day, it just left me with a question of what the fuck was the point? And if this is the best version of the film that could have been, I would hate to have to watch the original cut. And I hate to be the guy that told the MCU fanboys so, but I told you so. Now, please like, share, ring the bell, and subscribe for more movie reviews, such as my discussion of The Lost City and why it at least has more balls than Morbius, even with a few chuckles as well. And I'll see you in the next video.